Happy New Year and welcome to 2021. I'm so glad that we are back together again in worship and it will be a fantastic year. Today we start with the second Sunday of Christmas here as we gather at First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in downtown Columbus. It is our service of morning prayer and Holy Communion. Now, you may notice something a little different about the setting for this service today. <clears throat> it's because that we are recording from our homes. Um, each of us is bringing our pieces together, and we're grateful for Peter Murray, who's put this together as our live stream engineer. Uh, but you're going to notice that I'm in my uh, living room at home. Behind me, in Hebrew, is my favorite quote from Micah 6, 8. What does the Lord require but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God? Here in my living room, I bring you my message today. So it's good to be together. We will be back in Parish Hall next week, and though we are scattered today, we are together in worship. So here at First Church, we believe that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I am so glad that you are with us. My name is Tim Ahrens. I'm the senior minister of First Congregational Church, and I welcome the leadership team of Reverend Emily Corzine, our associate uh, minister, as she joins us today from her home, and Mr. Kevin Jones, our music minister, as he brings us some glorious music. I invite you to join in the service today and follow along. You'll find the service on our website, www dot first dash church dot org so it's www dash first church dot org <laughs> okay anyway go to the website join at the worship prompt and please gather with us in our prayers and our singing and our reading and I want you to be prepared in two other ways this morning bring elements of communion uh, gather them from your home as we gather later to celebrate communion, and also be prepared to share an offering today. Uh, it is a way that we um, give thanks to God for being together. Now, let us join in worship, uh, and welcome to the new year. Let us praise God and our newborn Christ together. Please join in our opening sentences. Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which God has made known to us. O oh God, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. join in the psalm of the day. We'll read it responsively. This comes from one, Psalm 147. Jerusalem will worship you, O God, and Zion will praise your name. For you have strengthened the bars of our gates and have blessed our children within us. You have established peace on our borders and satisfied us with finest wheat. You send out your command to the earth and your word runs very swiftly. You give snow like wool and scatter hoarfrost like ashes. You scatter your hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against your cold? You send forth your word and melt them. You blow with your wind and the waters flow. You declare your word to Jacob, your statutes and your judgments to Israel. You have not done so to any other nation. To them you have not revealed your judgments. Alleluia. 
Friends, in this season of Christmas tide, as we welcome the Christ child into our lives, we reconcile ourselves to each other and to God and share the peace of Christ. The peace of God always be with you and also with you. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Good morning. Hi. We're, we're so glad that you joined us. I've asked Cami, our daughter, to be part of children's time today because we're filming from home. We're glad you tuned in. I have been wondering about the manger scene since Christmas. I've been thinking a lot about it. And I remember that part of the Christmas story where Mary and Joseph are coming to Bethlehem and they are trying to find a place to stay. And there's someone who says, there's no room for you here. There's no room for them in the inn. And, he'd off and he offered them a place where animals were kept. That's right. There's a place next to a house. It was kind of like a guest room and usually used for animals. And they would bring in the animals at nighttime. And then there's a water trough that they lay, that they put straw and hay in to, um, for the baby Jesus to lay in. And so I was thinking about that place of there's no room for them in the inn. And I got to thinking that's different than what we know of the Christmas message. The Christmas message is that we should go and share that, that we should all come and see the baby Jesus. And so I wondered how many people could you fit in your manger scene at home? And I asked Cammie, how many people do you think we could fit in our manger scene at our house? And let me tell you, a lot. A lot. And so I kept thinking, who would we want to have come to the manger to see baby Jesus? And that's the story of Christmas, right? For us to go and share. And so we thought of a few characters that we would want to make sure Hi. are in the manger. My friend Poppy and your friend Jam Jam. Jam Jam, a new LOL doll. And so we're going to pan over to our manger scene, which is usually a lot different before Christmas. And then after Christmas, look at all the people who come to see the baby Jesus. You can see all of these characters. And I wonder too, who would you want to be in your manger scene? Who? Oh. Maybe there are different characters that you have. But let's think of the whole world. I bet essential workers, like a fire person, or a police officer, or um, a, another first responder, or a military person. Or uh, a troll. A troll. I wonder, too, about essential workers. They have a chance to come and see the baby Jesus. And refugees who are traveling with no place to go and no home, they have a, they have a place here in the manger scene. And so our manger scene continues to grow into the, into the Christmas season. And hopefully that your manger scene too, you'll find ways to bring in others to see Jesus and to share the story. So we hope you have a wonderful new year as you begin, remembering uh, to bring people to see Jesus. And that's part of our story as people of faith that we get to share the story of Jesus with others. So let us pray. Dear God, dear God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this day. And we thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for Jesus. Help us to bring others to see him. Help us, Help us to, to bring, bring others, others to, to see him. This day and always. This day and always. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful new year. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. 
for I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. To begin the new year, Reverend Tim asked me to give a new voice to this reading that he offers at the end of each lessons and carol service, a reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received, grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who was close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
invite you to join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Today, um, my message is Resolve to Thrive in the Light. And I want to start by sharing a story. A story that comes to us from our ancient sisters and brothers in faith, not from Holy Scripture. We call this an apocryphal story. And so I invite you to step into this story. There was a young carpenter who was a traveling carpenter. He would go from town to town, from home to home, and help people on the projects that they had that they needed to do in their own homes. As he came to one home, he had been traveling all day, working as he stopped to help people with the things they needed done. He came to the home of an old man, and as he knocked, the old man barely opened the door and growled as he looked through the crack in the door, who are you and what do you want? The young carpenter was frightened by this greeting, and he said, well, I'm a traveling carpenter, and I'm looking for a place to stay as the sun is going down. I'm happy to stay outside your home, but uh, is there anything that you need done, any projects that you need completing that I can work on when the sun rises tomorrow? And the man looked him over once or twice and then stepped out and said, Who are you really? And he said, Look, these are my tools. This is who I am. And after going back and forth, the man finally welcomed him in. He fed him and brought him to his kitchen table. And he said, I do have a project. In fact, I've got all the wood gathered. It's back by the barn. If you just go there in the morning, you'll see what I mean. And he said, Okay, what's the project? And he says, I want to build a wall. I want to build a wall because my neighbor is horrible and I've got to put something up to stop him from seeing me and from relating to me. And the young carpenter opened his eyes wide and said, okay, a wall. You want to build a wall? He said, tell me, what's brought you to this point? And he said, well, we've been neighbors for many, many years. But just about a month ago, he stole one of my sheep and has kept him on the other side of the creek and won't let me get him back. He says, I'm fed up with him. I can't stand him. I don't want anything to do with him ever again. So the wall will allow me not to see him ever again. So the young carpenter said, okay, well, I'll tell you what. In the morning, I'll start the project and we'll see how everything comes out. The man got more and more comfortable with the young carpenter and said, fine, in the morning you build the wall and I'll go to town to get some supplies I need. So that's what happened. At the crack of dawn, the young carpenter rose, they shared breakfast together, and then the old man made his way out to the road and down the road to town. Meanwhile, the young carpenter started building, and he built, and he built, and he built. The day went on. And as night was falling at the end of this long day of building, his project was complete. The old man returned from uh, the village with his supplies and dropped everything when he looked at what had been built. And he saw that in place of a wall, the young carpenter had built a bridge. And the bridge covered the creek. It had handrails. It had everything you need to make for a beautiful bridge. Anyone could travel with a whole family across this wide bridge that he had built. And on the other side of the bridge, the man saw the old neighbor, his longtime friend with a sheep on his shoulders, and tears were rolling down his face. And the carpenter said, why don't you cross your new bridge? And the man said, you didn't do what I said. And I said, and the carpenter said, yes, but I did what you needed. I built what you needed, not what you told me to build. And so the man walked across the creek and the neighbor met him 
and laid the sheep on his shoulders. And he said to him, I'm so sorry about your sheep, but we've had so many storms in recent weeks, I haven't felt safe fording the stream to come back to you with the sheep. He says, here he is, please take him home. And then he turned to the carpenter and he said, thank you for building a bridge because we've always needed a way to get back and forth to each other's homes so that we can be closer together. Wow. The old man started weeping as he hugged his neighbor and said, will you ever be able to forgive me for what I've done to create divisions? And the neighbor said, we're together again, and that's all that matters. I share this story this morning because we step into the new year needing to build bridges and no more walls. We need bridges between us. There are so many divisions, and we don't even know what some of the reasons are. Like in this story, we find out the neighbor was not stealing the sheep. He was guarding him and keeping him until it was safe to bring him back. Sometimes we have ideas about what our neighbors have done or what someone else has said, and we have no idea what we're really talking about, do we? We made it up in our own minds, and we create more and more division by the way we structure our thoughts and our emotions about somebody who is across the creek from us, somebody who is down the road from us. We start building in imagination to think that's what they're about, that's who they are, and we don't know, do we? Well, today we have some wonderful passages of Scripture, and I just want to sort of lift up. The passage of Paul to the church at Ephesians is phenomenal. It really lifts up the unity that we need to seek in Christ. Paul tells the Ephesians, really, everything you need to know about Christian faith. If you could pack all of our faith into ten verses of Scripture, they're here in 1 Ephesians 3-13. through 13. First of all, he says, you need to know that in Christ we are blessed with every spiritual blessing from heaven. That before the foundation of the world, we were chosen to be holy and blameless and covered with God's love. That's a wonderful image that Paul uses. And then he goes on to say, and we've all been adopted. See, that's the one thing about Christian faith. We are all adopted into this faith. So I love this passage uh, because none of us is born into this. We're all adopted into this, this through our baptism, through the blessings that God gives us. And we all belong to him in our adoption. And then he goes on to say, our sins are taken away from us, and forgiveness is given through the riches of God's grace. Whoa! We're forgiven, my friends, through the riches of God's grace. And he continues, God's salvation is offered for all of us. We live with Christ forever, and he is gathering us together in unity of the Spirit. Again, that's a powerful words that we're offered through Christ. And then finally he says we are marked. We're marked. And, and the mark, in, in a sense, is the cross of Christ that is on our head from the time of our baptism. It is the blessing of Christ that covers us in God's love. But we are marked by God in a beautiful way, by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the truth of the gospel, and salvation in his name. Oh my gosh, folks, this is everything we need, all packed into one powerful passage as Paul brings his sisters and brothers in Ephesus to join him on this faith journey. This week we celebrate Epiphany. It is the coming of the light of God. The Magi arrive with their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And on January 6th, we always celebrate the fullness of God's light, the 12th day of Christmas. So this week, as we step into the new year, I want you to make a resolution. Just this, only this. Be resolved 
to thrive in the light of Christ's love. Be resolved to thrive in the light of Christ's love. And when you make that resolution, build a bridge between somebody that you're separated from. Build a bridge to bring us closer together again. I love you all. I look forward to seeing you soon. This is the year we will be back together again. I absolutely believe it from the depths of my heart. God bless you, and I love you. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us the word in flesh. Let the word be the wisdom for all that we do in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, this word, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Everlasting God, we ask that you hear us as we pray these, this day. We ask that you accompany us on our journey through this Christmas tide season. We pray for those in our congregation, uh, members and family and friends who are listed in the Depart to Serve leaflet and who we hold in our hearts this day. We pray, O oh God, for our world, for places of war and division and infighting. We pray for peace among nations and among peoples. We pray that your reign would come to all who live in fear and provide your peace. We pray for our country in this time of presidential transition. We pray that cooler and calmer heads will prevail in the uneasiness that this, um, this time offers. And we pray for those in elected positions who are preparing for leadership during this challenging time. We pray for those in the world and those in our congregation, those in our community who suffer from COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for healthcare workers who work to give care to those in need. And today we especially pray for those we know who are affected by COVID-19. For the family of Mary De Fulis, for Trish Bishop, for Spence Roberts, Spencer Roberts, brother of Missy Zimmerman, and for Paul Poppleton, brother-in-law of Mary Ann Jacobson. We also are aware of those who have died from COVID-19. And we pray, O oh God, for the family and friends of former member David Majors. We pray for Jenny Mittendorf and Susie Sturbaum and the death of Jenny's father, Robert. We pray for Greg Halby on the death of his father, Glenn, for Marianne Getz on the death of Herb Getz. We pray for Andrew McGregor on the death of his father, Roland. We also are aware, O oh God, that, um, that your love is needed in the community of Gehanna and Gehanna Lincoln High School. We pray for Hector and Andrea Gonzalez on the death of Hector's classmate, Noah Long, who was a ninth grader. We pray for our community, O oh God. We pray for all those who have lost their lives to gun violence and homicide in this city this year. We especially pray for the family of Casey Goodson Jr and for the family of Andre Hill. We pray for our black and brown brothers and sisters who grieve, who are angry, who are fighting for justice, um, and to work for a, peace, a more peaceful community for all of us to live in. Guide us this day, O oh God. Also in celebration, we give thanks for the birth of Trenton Rink and Elizabeth Mitchell's son, Samuel Anderson, born December 14th. We also pray for members, Barb, Barbara Sterrett, Tom Bishop, Susan Brooks, John Matchett, Pat Liebschen, Dana Navin Schultz, Lindy Miller, and the Reverend Earl and Pauline Fritz. 
We also pray for members who we know have um, been diagnosed and are recovering from COVID-19, Leslie and Carl Schaub and Robert Reber. We also pray for Olive, for Strick, for Jonathan and Will. We pray for Bob, for Michael, for Tom and Susan, for Dwight and Elaine. We pray for Erna and we pray for Jane. Be with us, O oh God, and strengthen us as we go into this new year. May vaccines provide us opportunities for hope uh, to quell the, the global pandemic. And may we live into your vision for what you have for us as individuals, as a community, um, as a family, and as a community of faith. Guide us in all that we do. In Christ we pray by asking and praying to God the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, be our starting point and our haven and accompany us in this day's journey. Use our hands to do the work of your creation and use our lives to bring others to the new life you give this world in Jesus Christ, who is redeemer of all. Amen. Each Sunday at First Church, we live into our covenant by faithfully giving back to God a portion of our life and our labor. We designate a mission or ministry to focus on issues of justice or mercy. Part of your donations also go to support the ministries here at First Congregational Church and also through the United Church of Christ's denominational offering of our church's wider mission. Today, we receive a designated offering for Star House. Every youth in our community needs a home and a chance to thrive. This is the vision of Star House, Central Ohio's only drop-in center for ages, youth ages 14 to 24, who are experiencing homelessness and their small children. Star House offers young people a safe respite from the streets, immediate access to basic needs and connections to stabilizing resources, such as housing, transportation, healthcare, employment, education, addiction services, legal aid, government benefits, ID cards, and so much more. In 2019, Star House served over 1,300 individuals and their children. Youth come to Star House because of job loss, because of an inability to afford rent, or being kicked out of their housing by family or friends, sometimes an abusive relationship or an inability to um, afford other expenses. In 2020, exciting news happened for Star House. They, um, in partnership with the Finance Fund, they opened Carol Stewart Village, which is a neighborhood for college-age youth with on-site programs and services in our own community. So our support of Star House this day will go to support bus passes, knowing that CODA will begin to charge for bus rides in mid-January. So $25 will provide a seven-day bus pass $50 will be able to provide two state birth certificates for youth. $100 can provide an outdoor survival kit for those on the streets. So please give generously today so that every youth in our community has a chance to thrive.
This morning you are here at our table, our dinner table in our own home. And so we welcome you because it's not our table, it is Christ's table and Christ welcomes all. So it's no matter for everyone. So no matter who you are, no matter what you bring with you this day, no matter how old you are, you are welcome at this table of grace. Let us pray. Holy are you, O God, listener to our deepest longings, and blessed is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He emptied himself of glories and riches so we could be filled with grace and hope. He endured our suffering so we could be healed. He was broken so we could be made whole. He died so we could live with you forever. Come among us, O source of healing, your spirit gracing the bread and the cup, making these gifts holy, nourishing your children gathered here at your table. Mend our broken hearts so we may love all your children. Touch our wounded souls so we may embrace all those cast out by the world. Fill us with your gracious gifts so we may overflow in generosity to those in love. Then when that day of joy comes and we are all made new and we see completely, we will fill your heart with joy and praise until we feast at your table in glory. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he was at table with his friends and he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. So every time you drink it, remember me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come for all is ready. Let us join in the post-communion prayer, which is printed in the bulletin. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have brought us from darkness to light, from slavery to freedom, from death to rebirth. Transform our lives with this heavenly food that we may shine with your love and take to the world the risen life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We have heard the word and now we're called to respond and serve. There are many ways to help our neighbors and serve this faith community during this time of pandemic. We continue to collect notes of encouragement for healthcare workers at Grant Medical Center. If you wish to write a note of encouragement or a thank you note to a, an employee who was working on a COVID unit, please write that note, uh, draw a picture, um, send it to um, the church and list it as healthcare worker at the church's address, um, and I will make sure that they get to the pastoral care department at Grant Medical Center. A reminder that this Wednesday, 1-6, January 6th, is the celebration of Epiphany. And we as a church community are starting at trying something new and different, and if you came through the Advent drive-by, in your packet, there was an envelope that said, Star Word Gift, Epiphany, do not open until January 6th, 2021. So find these, get these out, have them ready so that you can open them on January 6th. They're a wonderful way for our community to live into a new word and a new way in 2021. Please note a new faith formation class is forming uh, for adults in conjunction with the Metropolitan um, Library. The book is called Stamped, Racism, Anti-Racism, and You. Tim Ahrens will lead two different sections of this same book study, when, uh, Monday nights, 
beginning tomorrow and also Wednesday mornings. The class will be on Zoom. Information is in the Depart to Serve leaflet. For more information, see that. Um, contact the church office if you um, are in need of that link. Faith Formation for Children will appear as a Facebook video on Wednesdays, so make sure you check that out. First Church Book Club meets on Wednesday, January 6th at 7 p.m. This is a monthly book club uh, led by uh, many people, but you can contact Elaine Warren for more information. Everyone is welcome to join that book study. Uh, you're welcome to join the, and we invite you to join the virtual coffee hour following this worship service. Um, immediately afterwards, there's a Zoom link in the Depart to Serve leaflet, and you can click on that link and it will take you directly to an opportunity to um, get to know people and, um, and, and share time together. Let us sing our closing hymn and depart with a heart to serve. Thanks be to God. God bless you and keep you. May God's light shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And as you step into this brand new year, lived in the light and the love of Christ, may you shine like the stars of heaven. Amen.